All right, guys. So jumping right. Ooh, my screen's gone. So jumping right into to, uh, today's video. Um, so just to fill you in, so I purchased the Protune yesterday, and uh, basically it pretty much already started. So the tuner already sent me a tune. Um, but the thing is, I have to install my Oxfuel also. So what I'm gonna do is he sent me a tune, and I still have to log it. So I'm gonna download that tune to the Access Port right now. Then I'm gonna go log that, and then once I send that to him, then we'll go ahead and install the Oxfuel. So this is gonna be kind of like, the beginning of this video is gonna be kind of rushed because like I said, the, they close like at 5.30. So my goal is to actually set up the tune on the access port. I gotta put all the um, gauges that they need to see on the access port. And I need to get, I well my goal is to get it to him before he closes. That way um, I can have something or hear something back by tomorrow morning. So it's what, 2.48? So real quick, while my access port is updating, the tuners that I went with was Stratified Auto. I went with them because not only are the options that they like um, they offer while tuning, it's just like their reputation. I kind of took that in consideration, and then also like read their articles on exactly like what each step would do, and basically it, it you know it, it reeled me in. So like I said, I purchased it yesterday. Um, and it literally started like it started yesterday. So I filled out the form, basically told them my mods. Um, and you know, told them my goals, this, this, and that. And so, literally, they reached me, uh, reached out to me today, and they sent the tune to me. And basically, it basically already started. So, right now, I'm, at, I'm updating my access port, and then um, the the tune that he sent me through email, I'm gonna load into the access port, and from there, I'm putting it on my car. And then I just have to set up the access port, and I'll show you guys once it's in the vehicle. But I gotta set up the access port so it has all the correct gauges, so that they can monitor and stuff. And then once I do that. I'm gonna go and uh, do like a third gear pull out uh, wide open throttle and then I get some other stuff. And then I'm gonna take that log, send it back to him. And then once we do that, um, we're gonna install the access or the um, ox field today. So stay tuned. All right, so access port just got done updating and we put the tune on access port. So let's go ahead and put it in the car. Let's see what we got her. We're gonna go to tunes. Change map. Yo, that's mad annoying. And then no. Alright, here we go. Basically everything that they want to see out of the car and I have to put it on the access port. So how did, how do you get to here? So you guys, so this is basically the main screen. Go to gauge and then it's gonna do this. And then you wanna press up until it's that like the setting button or the forward button I guess you call it is highlighted. And then you go to configure data logging. And then this is like literally everything that you can put on here. So for example, if I wanna like put this, just press it, press back and it'll save it. Um, but like I said, I just have to go through this list right here that they sent me and make sure that all of these like um, gauges are on this so I can log it and send it back to them. On, on the, the email, it tells you how to like switch map slots or whatever. Uh -huh. So he wants me to start off the map two because that's the low boost one. Yeah. So literally all you do is you press it on your, your control. I was seeing that on the email. Yeah, it was kind of weird, so like, that, that is weird. But you press this and literally like this is one and your RPMs move depending and it lets you know which one it is. That's pretty sick. So you're at... So this is one. And then I need to be at two, so I'll put it at two, leave it alone, and then I'll just go back to normal. So, do it again. So, press it again. So, this is basically the mode. So, the resume, press that. Yeah. And then press it. And That's so, this is telling me that it's at slot two. So, if I want to go back to one, press it. I barely need And go to one. Yeah. Or if I want to go to two, like at where I need to be, just yeah. leave it alone. And then I go back to That's pretty sweet. Uh, 25, right?
house and I just sent both data logs back to the tuner. Basically made my deadline because like I said, it closed at 5.30 and it is 4.06, so that is perfect. All right, so we're gonna get into the Oxfield portion of this video. Um, so right away, I'm gonna tell you guys, I'm gonna try to be as thorough as possible with this insulation. So you know, taking that off. Of course, it comes with wires. Now, I can tell you off the back, where is it? We're not gonna use these. I'll show you later what we're gonna use. And then these wires, these wires are gonna get taped because think about it, if you're gonna run these wires into your car, they're gonna be shown and who wants to pop their hood and see yellow, red, and brown wires. So once we get inside the wiring portion of it, I'll show you guys how to make it look cleaner and better. So this insulation, we know less than what we normally do when we're doing like something on our cars. We never mess with fuel. Yeah, we never mess with fuel. So this is, it's, yeah, it's, we're, we're kind of going in it a little bit blind, but what's kind of helped a little bit was the instructions that Stratify uh, basically offers you. Here, I already took the panel off, but let me get some light. So this is the panel that was right here. So all you do is remove those little nut thingies. And then what we're gonna do is we gotta get right there. So those are the fuses and it's remove F56 and that's gonna be for the fuel. So the fuse that you wanna get is literally, I can't show you cause it's all the way at the top. There's no way I can show you, but it's gonna be literally all the way at the top of the fuse box to the left and it's gonna be a 20 amp fuse. Okay, so what we have to do now, since we removed the uh, fuse, we have to start the car and wait for it to stall. Oh, so that's what it sounds like when you run out of gas. Oh yeah, basically. All right, crank it for another 20 seconds. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. All right, one more. Does not sound good. It doesn't. <laughs> Two, three, four, five. All right, that should be good. You guys heard car doesn't start. Yeah. Basically, it, it stalled, and then once it stalls, um, you want to crank it for another 20 seconds to ensure that basically all the pressure is relieved. Then what we're gonna do first, or second, no, third. Yeah, technically third. Safe side, we're gonna unplug the battery, so basically there's no power in the vehicle. And then uh, once that's done, then we'll go ahead and get started on the throttle body. You could just, here, just remove the positive. I'd rather just do that, because I've never removed that. Remove the negative. I never removed that, I'd rather just do the positive. The positive, just do a 10, and that comes up, that's it. Negative, bro, then just do negative. Why, it doesn't matter which one you do, because it looks like I don't have a, oh, that bolt, different, different. All right, so we just unplugged the battery. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna take off the intake. Intake's gonna be an eight mil. And basically we're taking that off to basically get access for the fuel roll and it's probably gonna make it easier just to install the whole system. Wait. Let's do the tuna. Yeah, why the heck is it that loose? What the heck? I mean, it's probably one of these. No, 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 no. There's no way, bro. That's it's not supposed to be like that. There's literally no clamp on that. So that that for sure is a boost leak. For sure. There's no way that that could have been holding that. There's no way. But I could have sworn I put a, a uh, clamp on it. No clamp on it. Yeah, there's no clamp on it. So there has. You, you're telling me that all the air stayed in there. There's no way. That's for sure a boost leak. So what's happening right now is we're trying to take off the manifolds so it can make it a little bit easier to install this auto body spacer. But there's this vacuum line that we can't get off. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna try to take off the manifold first. Um, what we're probably have to do is take off the um, the charge pipe too from the auto body so we can remove it. But we're gonna do that and then hopefully it just makes it easier to remove it because that vacuum line is not coming off. And if you plan on doing this yourself, be very careful because Basically the vacuum, basically everything that you need to do in this installation is fragile. Like the clips, even the vacuum line clips is like extremely, extremely fragile. Cause I've actually had a clip break on me already. So just make sure that you're extremely careful, but we're gonna do that and then I'll give you guys an update in a little bit. Okay, so this is 
not as so taking it apart is not as easy as you think and as I thought to be honest. So basically we removed the whole we removed the whole intake manifold. So just to kind of give you guys an idea, so there's gonna be a little uh, connection right here on the back, so a vacuum line right here. It's gonna be vacuum line right here, and then the rest is just uh, like electrical. So there's gonna be electrical connection right there. And there's a total of seven connections. It's gonna be electrical connections right there, and then we said a total of seven. Yeah. And then this is just the, um, what, is, what do they call it? Again? Oh yeah, and then yeah. So there's gonna be, this is not a connection, but there's gonna be like a harness that connects to it. So there's one right here, and then there's one right here. So like I said, the holes is for like little pins that the harness goes to. And then this is gonna be, what is, what is it called again? I forgot stuff in my head. The, um, the sound supposer. So this is gonna be the sound supposer. So I got this, this is basically where I get my uh, boost line off. So if you have it like mine, then that's gonna be a connection also. But yeah, that, uh, that was not, to take off. So the one that sucked was gonna be a connection right here. It has like this little green thing that's supposed to pop up. Yeah, I'll just bring you guys over here so you can see. This so, right here. This was the hardest one. So yeah, that green thing has to pop up. There's one down there. Where's the flashlight? The other. That green thing has to pop up, and it's extremely brittle. So like I said, if you plan on doing this yourself, just make sure that you're careful because. Jikes. Okay, so what we're doing now, since we have the intake manifold off, is we're taking off the throttle body, and we're going to be installing the ox fuel. Put the O-ring on it. It's, it's the O-ring should be already on there, yeah. Now we just got to figure out how to face it. since Because it'd be easier if it was actually still in the car, but it's not. So we just got to figure out how to face it, and... Like this, the injected things right here. They go off to the side? Yeah, that's That's wrong, because... What? Oh, you, ain't, you ain't screwing to anything. <laughs> oh. It's because you didn't have it on. Hold on, hold on. I'll do it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so intake manifold's back on with all the connections. You can see the uh, ox fuel kit right there. So what we have is we have the, um, the fuel line coming off of it right now. What you have to do is you have to put on, uh, what is it, Teflon tape? So basically what the Teflon tape is doing is allows the grooves to actually be um, basically no leaks. This is this funny because this tape is actually what you use for like when you're doing like PC piping like outside. So what we have to do next is we have to connect it to the HPFP, high pressure fuel pump. And then basically it's just like doing the wiring and then uh, we'll be good. It's following this. This is the high the HF, H yeah. HPFP. Whatever you want to call it. High pressure fuel pump. You connect it at the hard line right here. You see that? The hard line. And you just kind of... You get... This is 5 16 because the hard line is 5 16. Clip it right there. And basically you're disconnecting this right here. So this is able to connect in there. Alright, so... What's the connection there? The other side connects to here. So... We just have to... You just have to twist it? We gotta find out. Uh, oh. They said watch out for fuel... Uh, Great, so. Oh no, oh. So you guys see how that uh, that goes into the line right there? So you push into it, goes into the line right there, and then go ahead. I'm guessing you twist it. I'm scared. <laughs> There's pressure, bro. Is it? Yeah, because it said not without much force. Got it? Yep. No fuel? I smell fuel. <laughs> you smell it? No. Smell it. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> there. Got it? Boom. And just like that, it's off. Alright, you ready? Alright, so All right. running the line. I'm about to click it off. Right, so on. this. So, hold on. To the ox fuel kit, this is the fuel braided line from the ox fuel kit. We ran it all through in here. Con connected this adapter thing. It's the side, just like that. Yeah. Man, this is probably gonna leak. For sure, you're gonna leak. 
is pretty strong by the way. So if you like to if you guys are doing this by yourself or doing it yourself, just uh, keep in mind that yeah, it's pretty strong. While I give him light, basically what you're doing is the ox fuel is literally like a T harness. So the HPFP is basically going through the ox fuel. So the ox fuel is basically literally just sitting like in between both of it. Basically the, the goal of it is to when we're done, make it still look stock in here. So that's why we uh, we kind of ran it underneath here. And like I said, next step is running all these wires, but uh, we're gonna prep these wires so that, you know, we're not gonna see all these different colors in the engine bed. All right, so now it's my time to shine. The wiring portion is here. This is my time to shine. What? It barely says start by removing the air filter box. Wow. That's like one of the first steps. So what we did was, I put it right here, this is where I want it. Now some people put it sideways, but you know, me being like anal about certain stuff, I like things to be legible and like, I don't know, just like nice and neat. So I put mine right here, so you can physically see what it says. Ran my wires down here. So what I'm gonna do real quick, and I'll show you guys when I'm done, I'm gonna tape all the way up, probably just like right here for the ground, and then I'm gonna tape all the way up to the end for the power wire. And then when it comes to these wires, I'm going to see where we run it first because we may have to cut these to length. Actually, look. Um, a little further. Oh, for real. For real. See? My man's right here. That's true. That way you don't see it. So the controller's right there. The box. We ran it all the way down. So the wires go to the uh, throttle body because of course that's connected to the ejectors. So we ran the wires all the way down and we ran it this way because the air remember the air box goes right here and then what we did is we taped off the wires that way you're not seeing like any colorful wires in the engine bay so it looks all stock and stuff so we taped those wires and then the wires um leading up to the um the connectors up top we just again taped it and ran it up so we taped it majority all the way up and then we just kind of like split it off because of course it has to go with each connector they, these are the connectors that they included we're not going to use those and we're gonna connect it, um, basically splicing the wire, and we're gonna connect the wire, and then we're gonna tape it. All right, so what you're gonna do, see this one, this tape's actually all already coming off, so we're just gonna remove that. If not, you can just like take a razor blade and cut it. Make sure you're very careful, because razor blades are sharp. You do not wanna touch two wires together. I mean, even though it's not gonna do anything, because there's no power or signal going through it, but still, you don't wanna have a, two spliced wires touching each other. But we're gonna do that. You're gonna cut it. So the wires that we need to get to, well wire we need to get to is gonna be the far left one. So again, cut that back like that. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna splice into this wire that we need to get to. So in our case, it's gonna be each left wire and each connector. So we're gonna splice into it. Make sure you don't wanna, so if you mess up, it's fine, but you don't want to do it too close to the connector just in case you mess up. So you kind of want to do it a little bit back. So you splice into it. Now some sheetings are a little harder to get to, but as long as you have a, a new razor blade, then it should be fine. Like that. So basically you're exposing the wire. All right, and then this is wire that we got to connect to it. So we'll cut it to length. We'll add a little bit slack just in case. So we'll cut it like right here, right? Cut the wire right there. And then, of course, there's still tape on it, so then you just strip it back, just like that. Now, there's two ways you can do it. You can do a military splice where you separate the wire <clears throat> like that, and you put the wire through it. Technically, it's a better connection. Or you can just take the wire and wrap around it. Make sure you do it real tight so it has a good connection. Just make sure that's tight like that. So you see it's spliced into. Take your tape. And first, you get the tape down, like the, where the bottom of the wire is. You pull it tight, so the tape's on there, and then you just wrap it around. So, you see how that's connected now? Now, since we already cut it back, now what you do is you take some more tape, and you make it look as if you never cut it back. Now, in this case, obviously it's gonna, you're gonna be able to tell because the type of, uh, now this, the, t the tape that they use is called Tesla tape. Now you can use the same tape, but in our case we just have 3M electrical tape. So then you start off from where you cut it, and then you just make your way up as if it was never cut. 
And since we're doing that to each connector, it's gonna look normal. And there you go. Looks like nothing was ever done. And that's it. And you basically just repeat the set to each one and uh, you'll be good. And like I said, it's each left wire in each connector. Each, the far left one. Far left one in each one. Okay, so <laughs> we're technically done. All finished. All done. So the thing is, since we're still like, we just actually just got into the printing process, I can't supply power to the unit until the tuner is ready to actually add that. But literally everything's done. When the time is set, then I said to install that. But as you guys can see, connected. One, two, three, four. Map center's tapped into. You can't even tell. Because it's up there. Shoulder skills. Yeah, it's right there. So this is basically my ideal in my head of like when you're installing wiring, like especially in your engine, like you want it to make you want it to look like as clean as possible. Because I mean Say like you pop it, you have all those wires showing, and then you got the little freaking whatever they what palsy taps. Palsy taps. Oh. What what do you call them though? Palsy taps. <laughs> but <laughs> but yeah, so like I said, you can you can't even tell that it's installed. Basically, put everything back, and we will be good. So I just got back in the house. It's 4:11 in the morning. I will catch you guys in the next video. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button because there's more content. So. This year was the year for performance for the ST. Next year is gonna be the year of cosmetics. So keep in mind, we still gotta bag it. And there's a couple more things I wanna do towards. So stay tuned. But other than that, I will catch you guys in the next video. Peace out. I've been really trying, baby. Trying to hold back this feeling for so long. And if you feel like I feel, baby, then come on. Oh, come on.